Hi there, welcome back. Um, I just want to start off by saying a massive thank you to Dave Thorzax and all his followers that have come over to my channel. Absolutely fantastic. Um, really, really is very, very good of you. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try and keep uh, you all entertained. I'm going to try my best to keep putting videos on. Um, I am trying my hardest to get footage from the range, but I'm not having the greatest of success. I've bought things like I'm spending the money on it, but it's just not working for me. I, I bought an ammo cam, um, but the problem with this one is uh, I did a load of recordings, I did a load of developments and, and bits of fun shooting, uh, push recording it. When I come home, the, the, the videos that I've recorded seem to back out and show you absolutely everything, and you can't see the actual targets being hit, which is the whole point of me getting that. So there's another camera on its way. Um, I'm, I am desperate to get you some footage of the range because it, it's exciting for me. It'd be interesting and exciting for you guys as well. It's, it's you know, you, you, you're seeing what I'm doing and you're seeing the results of uh, what actually happens down there. Um, I spend so much time there, so it's only fair that you get to see it as well. So it is coming, if you bear with me. Um, tonight's video um, is I've got some new bullets from a 308, so I'm doing a bit of load development. I just wanted to explain to you and show you how I do load development, and for those that don't know what load development's all about. So I've, uh, I've decided to go with a 155 grain die a bullet. Um, I've got a load of case prep 308, so what we do, I get 30 cases, there's three in there. I get 30 cases so that I'm doing it in strings of three. Um, I've gone with this time M135 Vitivieri powder. Um, not had much experience with it, so this is a learning curve for me as well. Um, it's nice trying different powders, but uh, it's also nice sticking with the same one, so it makes it simple. Um, basically, so what I'll do to start off, um, I always go with Vitivieri powders, obviously, with a Vitivieri manual. Um, you go in there, you find your, your calibre, you find your powder, you come in, you find your, your certain loads, you find your minimum and your maximum charge weights. Um, always important to fully, fully understand and study your charge weights. You never want to go under and you never want to go over. Um, so what we do, once we've determined a maximum and minim minimum charge, uh, I've found the minimum on this load with them bullets is 35.1 as a minimum. And as a maximum charge, it's 41.3. So what I'll do then, the first string of three bullets, I'll load up at 35.1, which is the minimum. And then I go up in 0.5 increments. So the next string is 35.5, then it's 36, 36.5, all the way through until I get to the maximum charge, where you can't do a 41.5 charge because it's that'd be 0.2 over the maximum. So the last one's 41.3. Nine times out of ten, the highest charge, the maximum charge rate on, on a powder load isn't normally the most accurate. It's normally just below. And for a 308, I've found with a past experience, it's usually hovers somewhere around 45, 45.5 grains. So what we do, we go to the range with them. We shoot them. I'll show you a target board in a minute to, to explain a little bit more about that side of it. Um, we go to the range, shoot them, and when we find the three strings that go more or less very close to the same hole, what I'll do then is come on and then I'll play about with the point ones below and the point ones above that certain charge, just so that you can try and shrink the group. And then when I've got the group shrunk, I go into different headspace, like seating the bullet shorter and longer away from the lands i always start off seating the bullets very close to the lands if not touching and then work backwards in two three thou increments just to see if you can find that sweet spot and, and again it's all about shrinking groups now all my load development's done at 100 yards it's all more or less done at the same range everything's the same conditions um it's what i've got to work with so it's what i use um i'll i'll step back now i'll just have to come out here and i'll show you one of my targets um just to explain so this was a couple of weeks back uh, it was for a 300 winchester magnum um i started off with a charge at 68 grains you can see that they're not too far away from each other but again that that's not brilliant but again 
we go through the range and see what the rest of them do. So at 68.5 you can see that there's two bullets gone more or less through the same hole and then there's one over here, people call that the flyer. Um, this one here, it's obvious that the rifle doesn't like 69 grains, um, so that one's out of the question, you don't work anywhere near 69. 69.5, again you've got the flyer but you've got two gone through the same hole. That's it's, it's not brilliant, but it, it's not too bad. Then you get to 70 grains, and it's a little clover leaf. Now, 70.5, it's starting to open up again. You've got 71 grains. Again, you've got the two in the same hole and one very close. So it's fairly consistent throughout the charge where it's what it's actually doing. 71.5 grains, and then you've got a string. It's, again, could have been made I doubt it was because everything like I, I just I'm left alone it, it's fully concentrating you know the the rifle's solid the way it's planted on the bipod that I've got it on and, and it, the bags at the back everything's you know so I would say that that's it's just that powder charge isn't the the accuracy now and then the highest charge that I was using that day was 72.5 so what I did the week after I played with 70, the 70 grains I made up again, just to make sure it was still going into a clover. But I was doing like 69.5, 69.6, 69.7, 8 and 69. All the point ones below, all the point ones above, just to see if I could actually shrink that anymore, which I did. I haven't got the target bar to show you. That one actually, it was chucking it down with rain. It was gale force winds, I think I mentioned on one of my other videos, and the target board actually snapped when I was coming back home, um, back from the, the targets down to the uh, the range bench, so that target board wasn't used. Um, the rest of the stuff on here, just ignore that, was playing about with uh, different rounds in a 308. Uh, there's there's all sorts of bits and pieces. What Because we have limited time down there, it's on the Sunday when I go, it's open for three hours. So when I've done things like this, uh, that target was included in these. Um, I, like an hour into it when I finish this I go down stick a load more stickers on and start blasting all sorts of stuff normally these things are absolutely covered in 2-2 long rifle by the time I've finished because we'll just have a bit of, bit of fun and, and just keep blasting away but uh, this was a serious board that turned into a bit of fun uh, so that's just explaining that side of it um, so then yeah we get, we get them loaded up we go down to the range we test out all our groups we come back and then we start playing around with the point ones, get that group shrunk, play a gilt out with the head spacing, which is basically just getting the bullet, just trying to find that sweet spot. Um, then when we've got a load developed, we come back, make up a box 50, sometimes a bit less than that for the first box, go down to the range again the week after, shoot all however many I make, 25, 30, sometimes a box of 50, it depends how confident I am, but first box, go down, check that out, and that's your load, and then when I go to other places, you know, different ranges and stuff like that, or there's a place I go to called Orion in North Wales, I've got a box full of 100 rounds that I know where they're going to end up going, so uh, yeah, it's uh, that's part of my 308, and uh, a little bit of uh, load development for that one. I've uh, got many other calibers to do uh, and it'll be fun showing you them as well so hopefully you'll join us then. A massive thanks again to Dave Tharzax because uh, you've, you've, there's people like you that actually make the world turn. You, you've been fantastic with what you've done. Um, for those that don't know, Dave did a video for me as a big shout out and all his followers, and well, not all his followers certainly, but the majority uh, of people that watched the video this morning have now come onto my channel and subscribed too, which is absolutely fantastic. You've made my day, everybody. So thank you very much, and I'll keep trying to entertain you. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Goodbye.